So now we're going to look at using an NPM package called Socket, and this allows us to do real-time communication between a client and a server. And what we're going to be doing is building a small and simple chat app to do this. Now, first I wanna just talk about um, how to use Socket and some key methods. So what I have here is an Express app, and it's very simple, it just has Express installed. And we have um, created an Express app here, and we've set it to use public and index.html right here to be served on the base route. And this um, index.html has its own client uh, .js script right here because socket requires JavaScript on not just the server but also the client. So we're gonna be setting up some scripts for the server and the client to do this. The first thing we wanna do is install socket. So we just do npm install socket like this. And um, if you wanna know how to set up socket with um, an express app, there's actually a guide in the npm page right here. So you can't directly use socket with an express app. You have to use the base, like the normal node HTTP and then give it the express app and then use socket with that. So what you just want to do here is first just declare, um, hang on. Oh, my bad. Um, the package name is socket.io. So you want to do npm install socket.io like this. So you also want to declare um, the node HTTP and I'm just going to call this server and this the package name is just HTTP and again you don't have to npm install this, this is part of node by default and you want to just call the create server method and give it our express app and it will create a HTTP server with our express app that um, socket can then use and in terms of socket, what you want to do is you want to just, I'm just going to call the socket instance in this IO. Um, that's the default convention in a client and the socket instance is called IO. And you just want to require a socket IO here. And on this, what you can do is you can, uh, this is, this itself is a method right here. And you can call this method with the um, argument of your HTTP server that you created. And this will, um, run the server with socket um, built in. And the final thing you wanna do is when you start up the server, you wanna make sure that um, instead of app.listen, which is the express app, you just wanna do server.listen instead because you wanna use the node HTTP server to listen because that allows socket to work. So if I save all of those now and I start up the server and we go to a localhost 3000 and refresh the page, we can see that we've connected to the server and the index page is just loaded. I've just given it some styles right here. So we have socket available in server, but we also need to add it to the client. And there's a couple of different ways you can do this, but I'm just gonna do it the most simplest way possible, which is with a script tag. And um, you can install socket through, um, if you look at this installation page for client installation in um, socket.io, you can install it using a script tag like this. Or if you're hosting a socket server, um, socket by default will provide a client version that we can um, uh, we, that we can give to any clients that connect. So if I just to go localhost 3000 like this, um, what socket do is on the root slash socket.io slash socket.io.js um, it'll basically um, allow a, ver a client version of socket to be available to any anything that connects to it. So that's a, that's a socket client right there. And that socket client um, is available as just IO like this. Um, so what I'm just going to do is in the client.js, I'm just going to say console.log IO just to make sure that we have it available. So if we restart the server now and um, let's see what happens. So if I refresh this, we can see that we have the socket IO right here. So we have a socket to work with. And by default, um, in, in a client, you would call um, the actual socket instance that you use um, socket like this. So in a server, you'd call it IO and in a client, you'd call it socket. It's a bit confusing, but um, you'll understand how it works soon. So um, 
one, one thing we can do is we can create an event for a connection to uh, see check when a user is connected. So what we can do is we can say so, um, io dot on and this on method I'll talk about what, what this is in a second but I'm just going to say connection. So what this means is on a connection event and as a second argument you'll have a function to run and the function receives a socket. So socket in this case remember is the client instance right here. So we have the client socket right here. And what I'm just going to do for now is say console.log and then a user connected like this. So if we start the server now and um, I go to localhost 3000 and I refresh the page, um, oh, my bad. One last thing you need to do here is um, you want to call IO and then you want to give the address of the express app that we we set up so we want to just copy this and paste it into here if we start the server now and I refresh the page we can see that we have a user connected right here so we've successfully established a connection from our client here which is completely separate um, to our express to our socket right here so that's essentially how socket works. So now we're going to look at um, setting up the project to submit this. And again, you can get it the git, git repo from here and you can import that into Glitch. So once you've imported the project into Glitch, the first thing we want to do is before we can tackle all of these socket challenges is I want to make sure that we actually have a working connection. So the first thing I want to set up is the database. And what I'm going to start off with is I'm just going to do npm install mongodb and I'm gonna make sure that um, I update mongodb to the latest version so what I can do here is in package.json I can just grab the latest version number of mongodb which is 3.6.0 and I'm gonna just make sure that I am I install that version and I think when you're connecting to a database it's best to use the most up-to-date methods so if I just do npm install after doing that that will install the latest version of mongodb for us Another thing you want to do is in your environment variables, you want to make sure that um, you have your database password stored in an environment variable so that it can be recovered. And also, since um, Express Session uses a server ses a session secret to hash cookies, you want to make sure that you also set up a session underscore secret variable and just give it a random string in here for now. Um, let's check on this. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit, hit refresh here so that it ins so that it updates our project with the latest version. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is um, create a connection URI. So I'm just gonna do let URI equals and open a string in here. And in um, MongoDB Atlas, what you can do is if you go into clusters and then connect and then uh, connect your application with node and then 3.6 or later. You can just copy this URI right here. And what you want to do is you want to replace the password with your password from your environment variables. So I'm just going to do process.env.pw like this. So that's the password filled in. And you want to also replace the database name with the name of your database. And in my case, the database name is advanced node. So I'm just going to make sure that I call this advanced node. And instead of giving the URI from your environment variable, you want to make sure that you give the URI the string that you just created right here. And also, it's important to know that um, the newer versions of MongoDB don't return an actual database instance. They actually return an instance of the client. And if we change that to client, we can see that these databases are undefined. So what we want to just do here is we want to say let db equals and then call a method on the client called db and then just give the name of your database. And that will basically return the database instance that these um, packages right, these um, functions right here require. And if you do all of that, what you'll notice is that um, your app page actually loads because the database connection was successful and the, the server started listening. Another thing that you want to do is um, if you go to app and then auth.js, you can see that we're using um, a GitHub login here, like in the last project. So we want to make sure that um, in GitHub and then in developer settings and auth apps, you want to create a new auth app and you want to give the um, live app URL right here. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you set up environment variables for your client um, ID and your client secret from this page. Again, I'll change my client secret later. Um, one other thing to do is in 
um, auth.js, you want to make sure that um, the callback URL is set to your app's actual callback URL and not just the, the default callback URL that they set up for the free code camp example. So you want to change it to that. So um, we want to just do one last tweak here and that's in in where we create the date user in our database. So if I just do console.log profile here and Actually, let's move that out of there. That shouldn't be there. That should actually be up here. And what I'm just going to do is open up the logs here. And if I go and try and sign in, you'll see something interesting happen. So if I log into GitHub and then I authorize it, we'll actually have an issue on trying to serialize this or save it to create the document in the database. That's because this um, email field right here, where they're setting the email, it doesn't exist anymore. In the profile, there's no field called emails. So we just want to make sure that we replace this um, profile.emails zero dot value part with the actual field where our email gets stored. And where it's now stored is in the profile, you have this um, field called JSON, which is an object. And inside this JSON, you have um, a value in here called email right here. So you want to make sure you just replace it with that. So if I clear that now and I go back to the base URL and then if I try sign logging in again. Um, oh, my bad. This, pro, this JSON part has an underscore before it. If we try it again and click login with GitHub, we can see that the chat app has actually loaded. And so now it's actually created um, the user in our database and it's managed to serialize and deserialize it, which is why that page loaded after authentication. And if we look at the database, we have a, an, a collection called social users and you can see that my profile has been added right here. So we have our GitHub um, data um, GitHub login setup as well. So now we can actually start figuring out how to complete this first challenge. So let's take a very quick look at what's going on in this project. So we have a server.js right here. And what they've done is they've imported everything like this. They've told it to use body parser. Um, view engine is pug. Express session has been created as well. We have a database connection, and remember that um, instead of app.listen, they've also used http.listen um, because that's what you need for a socket. And um, what we have is if we go into um, auth.js, we have all the authentication set up right here. So we have all the passport serialized, deserialized, and then the GitHub strategy to create users to our database. And in roots, um, we have the intro authenticated, we have the GitHub root and the callback root. And the callback root, once it's been serialized, um, redirects to slash chat. And the index root just loads index.pug. And, and the chat root loads the chat page of pug. Um, we have a logout and then we have a 404. And then um, in public, sorry, in um, views and then pug, and then in index.pug, we just have the um, login with GitHub link. And then in chat.pug, um, we have the actual chat part right here. And um, we can see that these client side version of socket has been imported right here. Um, you could have done this through the app URL itself, but they've just decided to use a CDN. So it's basically like the script tag. And they've also got their own client.js file um, where they'll be writing the client side script. And if we look in public, we have the client.js script right here. So let's look at what we need to do. So the first thing we want to do is um, if we go into um, server.js, we need to start um, the, the um, socket server up. So what we want to do here is we want to say let IO equals require and the package name is socket.io like this. And um, yeah, and then um, what they've done is when they created the HTTP server, they've just called it, um, basically they've just called it HTTP right here. Again, you can see that they've given the express app here. So we wanna just make sure that we call this with the argument of the HTTP server right here. So that's the first thing we need to do. The next thing we wanna do is set up a connection event so that uh, we can log that a user has connected when they sign in. So once again, we'll call the on method and the event name is connection. And the data given here or the data received here is a socket from the client. And we wanna just 
in here we would just want to do console.log a user has connected like this. So that's a server side code setup. And now we just want to do the client side code. So if we look in um, views and then uh, chat.pug, we can see that the script tag for the socket client has already been declared before the client.js. So we have IO available. And following the convention, we just want to make sure that um, we um, declare the IO as socket, um, which is what is used in the client. And this global IO thing is basically used just to make sure that this doesn't throw an error because um, this is in a node app setting, but we're using a script tag. So we have socket ready. And if we now um, open up the logs, and if we go to this page right here, and I refresh this, Okay, so my project was just being quite slow, but if we uh, just load, reload the page for the, and then we go into login with GitHub, and then it goes to the chat route, we can see that a user has connected, has now been logged, and that's because um, I a socket here received a connection event, and we've just told it to log to the console. So that should be everything you need um, to submit this. But if you go ahead and submit that, you'll see that all the tests have failed, and that's because there's one last important thing that you need to do. And this is a fault, I think, of free code camp, and I don't really think we should be fixing this. But if we go into fcctesting.js, we have this array called allowed origins, and this is where it allows the test suite to be accessed from. And what they have here is the old free code camp URL, which is freecodecamp.com. But the new uh, free code camp URL, freecodecamp.org, isn't actually available in this. So we want to just make sure that we copy this. And we want to add a new entry into this array like this, and um, just put it, make sure you leave that as a string. And if we put that there like this, and then um, if we go ahead and run the tests, we can see that all the tests have passed. So that's everything we really need to do. So we basically just set up a socket app and we set up a connection between the client and the server.